I don't know what success is. I really don't. Um, I think possibly uh, freedom, the ability to chart your own course is probably the closest I can come. Immediately after law school, I went to Boston, um, worked for a firm downtown Boston. And I did that for a, a few reasons. I was looking for a more intense environment than what could be found in Vermont at the time. And I was looking for really top quality people in the fields where, where they were. It didn't really matter necessarily what the field was in particular, but I just was looking for high quality people because they're the ones you learn the most from. And I had a sort of frustrating time in Vermont. I really couldn't find what I wanted. And so I went to the city. Then, when I was in Boston, we worked hard. I mean, you, sometimes you'd, for example, show up on a Monday morning. By 9.30 in the morning, it would be, hey, Putnam, I need you in Washington now. So what do you do? I mean, you jump on a plane and go there. Sometimes I was there for three days with the same suit. <laughs> I learned to throw an extra shirt into my briefcase, you know. Milk, pure, organic, the basic dairy ingredient simple and promising in its possibilities. I don't think I ever decided I didn't want to be in the law profession anymore. I think I decided that there were a lot of other things I wanted to do at the same time. And there are only so many hours in the day. I was able to parlay that into living here, uh, Pomfret, Vermont, working in Hanover, New Hampshire. It was then, and, and maybe still is, the best firm in this area. I was able to have an urban practice that had nothing to do with the local area, but live here. I could practice in my underwear, and who cared? When I finally found that, in some cases, um, that law was turning into a nine-to-five job, I said, forget it. And that's not what I'm really interested in. We call farming five to nine, which it is, um, but it's also all the time. There is no time off. If you have a cow that's got a problem, it, it's a 24-hour job. The possibilities are endless, and each process offers a distinct product, a distinct opportunity to add value. I'd settle cases from a tractor on a cell phone. I was one time leaning over the bulk tank working on something, and I, I was doing a, a conference call with maybe 10 or 15 lawyers on the phone. And a cow started going nuts, you know, in the background. And the only friend that knew me said, Hey, Putnam, you in the barn? <laughs> Shut up, Sam. <laughs> milk is no longer milk. It is transformed. It is nurtured, cultured, refined into something new. And the hills of Pomfret are almost as nice as the hills of South Woodstock. And we thought that we would, 
want to live here. But the barns weren't here. And I don't think it had been farmed since 1965. We had a lot of stuff to do. When we got here, for example, when the icebox fell through the kitchen floor, we knew it was time to replace the kitchen floor, and it, it was that way. Well, we started with beef, um, and then the beef brought the pastures back, along with a lot of tractor work, beefs and tractors, and then we bought the dairy cows in 1985, I believe, and we were one of the first organic shippers of, of raw milk to the, what was then the Vermont Organic Cow. And that organic milk market was a great way. Um, you made a ton more money, of course, than a conventional herd would make. But then, even then, we realized that even with 20 cows and shipping organic, that's just not quite enough. So cheese was the option, and where do you go with that? Well, what we did, we traveled around, we took the entire family, we were gone for I think almost a month the first time, and we went back three or four times, and we learned a ton. I mean, we went all over the Alps, Italy, Switzerland, and France. We didn't have any agenda. We didn't have a plan. We simply found that, I think everybody's geographically imprinted, and we really enjoyed the area of Beaufort and in the Tarantais Valley. We really liked that area a great deal. And then, of course, we found this cheese, and we loved the cheese. So things just began to come together. And I don't think that anybody should ever be doing anything that they don't really like, and we really like this cheese. There's a, it's a big world, and there's so many things. And if you can learn a lot about what you're doing, that's really exciting, that's really fun. It is the product of choice. The simple, straight path that separates the Kurds from the way. It is the product of expectation. To simply be milk is just not enough. I wanted to do it as best I could. And that stuff takes care. And if that's the approach that you're going to have, I don't think anybody should underestimate the amount of work it takes. They talk about genius is what, 1%? The rest is 99% sweat? Is that how the expression goes? I don't know. But you got to work on it. And I, I don't, life is too short. We are very small. If I was craft foods, sure, I'd make craft cheese slices. So what, you know? But I'm not. I'm, I'm tiny. So what I do has to be great.
It is mass-produced. It is patented. It is packaged. It is plebeian. Or it is creative. It is your sweat, your tears, your desire, your pride. It is your vision. And I think that as you go through life, there's a great deal more satisfaction in being, if not the best, at least the best you could do. And I, I have no illusions. I don't think that I make the best cheese in the world, and I don't think I'm the best cheesemaker in the world. A long way from any of that. But we're trying. <laughs> and I think that that's a big deal. The possibilities, the choices, the courage to make them your own.